and we should be live on Instagram and YouTube. Fantastic. So good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming and for joining me again this week. Really, really good to be back. I am always pleased to join uh, join you to talk about uh, our favourite topic of language learning. Now, today I wanted to talk about um, about learning with a polyglot and what that means. Um, obviously, because I've announced recently um, that I am going to offer uh, the option to study with me. And this is something that I I started doing. Um, uh, I, I started working with some people this year uh, during the whole COVID thing. And the, yeah, the interesting thing is, is that it's, it's um, something that I have really enjoyed doing. So I am, I'm really quite pleased that uh, it's, it's gone so well and, um, and that the people I've been, I've been working with have enjoyed the, the, sort of the sessions that we've had, because for me, so sort of the important thing is that there are two things that are important for me that if I'm going to do something like that, we we'll work with people with language learning. And that is, first of all, that, um, that they actually um, get something out of it and enjoy it. But also that I enjoy it, because if I don't enjoy it and I don't get anything out of it, um, it's very difficult to motivate people when you don't like something you're doing, right? So it's, I'm going to try and see if I can do something about this. Um, Instagram is... It's a little bit slow um, for some reason. Let's see if I can do something to improve it. There we go. Okay. Hopefully it will be better on Instagram now. But um, yeah, so the thing the thing is, is that I want to make sure that I'm doing something that's useful for you and also for me. Um, the last thing I want to do is to sort of... Uh, do something that I feel I'm just going through the motions. I, I actually tend to enjoy my work generally. And I've worked in different fields, usually using my language skills for projects and um, within companies and for um, government institutions as well, using my language skills uh, for my work. And that's kind of something I'm going to be talking about actually on, on Tuesday for... Um, for Lancaster University uh, with a friend of mine, uh, Timothy, who usually comes to these um, live events as well that I have, that I hold. And, and so I've been, I've, I've taught languages before. So I have taught languages and obviously I've taught my daughter languages because I've, I've been raising her with five languages. Um, so I've taught and tutored a number of people in a number of languages. The goal for me with this is not necessarily to tutor people in a language, because I think that that could be part of it, but that shouldn't be the main thrust of what we do. And the reason I say that is because there are some really good teachers out there on italki and, uh, and in other places, maybe on the internet, where you can actually get... Um, people who are qualified to teach their own language and they will they will do it well and so you know it's not necessarily my my goal is not to to do something that other people are, are doing um already well enough and and so I don't also want to do something that is in conflict with my interest with with italki I don't um particularly want to to, to take work away from people who work as language teachers. Um, I think that, yes, I can work and, and help with the learning process, but actually just going through a course or materials to teach you a language is not the main goal of what I'm, uh, my main objective. Um, that can just be part of it. It's actually more to do with the um, the internal workings and the processes of, of the learning uh, itself. So, um, accountability, um, strategies, motivation with with the with the process. It's to do with um, finding sort of ways to to make the language and the text and the things you're working on meaningful for you. 
And this is why I, I've kind of put out as well that this isn't something that I want to be some sort of standard, I do this one thing with every single person. That's kind of pointless because I don't I don't actually believe in in one way fits all. I I think that everyone has to be there are sometimes there are things that work with for certain people but sometimes it needs to be tailored slightly and adapted slightly for each individual and I think the only way you can really find that if you haven't found it is is by a proper discussion and an ongoing relationship with somebody who's going to talk through that with you and there's I don't know if you see even this idea of language coach or language mentor and things like that I, I don't know I don't even know which category this fits under but um I would say that it's more of a a consultative uh, thing where where I would work with people um, who who want to succeed in the language learning and maybe at the moment they feel that um, yeah they have lessons or you know you may have lessons or you may have um, books and things like that but actually there's more to it that you need to access to be able to make it successful for you and at the moment I've I've been doing sort of giving this free advice right on online for the last how many what over a year and and that will continue so these lives will continue um okay so I think on on Instagram I don't think this is working very well but um, it keeps cutting out and I'm not sure why the internet is actually not a problem here but I don't know if it cuts out join me on youtube um it yeah it so the the idea will be that we will uh, we would work together to to actually be as help make you as successful as possible in your language learning and i think i asked the question you know what what would i do differently what do you think i would do differently i know what i would do differently i think to many other teachers uh, but it would be interesting to to, to know what you thought so I, I asked that question and some of it was to do with understanding you know what you maybe need to know what you should focus on so having been through the process of learning multiple languages and languages at different levels for different needs there are definitely areas where I can say to you look I, I know that this this word potential that these these things may not be things that you potentially need to worry about memorizing right away and if you forget about it it's not the end of the world so to kind of to help get you over some of those humps right um giving tips obviously things that have worked for me things that i use things that i've seen work with other people because of course what works for me and what i've seen working for other people can be different so let's say for example the way luca lampariello studies languages is not necessarily the way i study languages um i definitely don't make those notes that he makes in the same way um and i definitely don't do the necessarily this translation backwards and forwards um uh, on for, for all of my languages and yeah, very very rarely do things like that but I, I will use those if if that's something that is works for you um but they're all there are many different ways to go about learning a language and this is why i say there's not one way that works it's you have people who have studied languages from many different ways and have been successful in their own rights so the idea would for me would be um talking about different approaches talking about different actual concrete things that you can do um the most important thing is this is really just doing it all the time being accountable for what you do, writing, reporting, recording, being confronted by the language or, and making sure that you're engaging with and in the language as much, much as possible. And so these are the kinds of things I can I can definitely help with. Um, some people have said that I can give them money to buy books. Yeah, I think that's probably more of a joke. <laughs> um, that's not the point. No, I'm, I'm not here to... Um, give people money i am definitely here to share my advice and and i as i put on the form i'm not potentially here to uh, this is why i didn't put a price on because i want to help people in a genuine way and my goal here is not to um not to sort of 
exclude people. I, I, what I want to do is make sure by this application process, I am really looking for people who I think will most benefit from what I do and what I can do and what I've been doing this year. And this year I've been working completely free of charge um, for, for some people. And um, of course I can do that to a degree, but also when, when hours are taken out of my day and where I can't do other things for work, clearly I, I need to eat but um uh, you know I, <laughs> I that there is that but that's why i left it to the discretion of you to decide uh, what you want to do um if you want to or if you can um pay towards the cost of, of doing this now what i have had is quite a lot of responses already um a number of people with very different needs and very different um very different goals with the languages and very different languages as well um, some of them are very language specific that i feel would actually be better served by a teacher of the language maybe an italki teacher or, or someone like that you know who who focuses on on that one language um, i don't necessarily know if i am the right person for some of the requests that i've got in and where i feel that that's not the case i will tell you um, um, as I say, my goal is not to fake pretend that I'm going to do something that somebody I think can do um, well enough, and um, I'm I'm going to have a, a huge learning curve to to be able to get into the language. For example, I mean, I'm not going to be learning um, fluent Japanese, for example, to be able to help you with your your already um, intermediate Japanese. That's, that would be um, cra crazy for me to do, um, but there there are going to be some like that that i'm going to reply and what i'll say is um if if you get an email like that from me um we we can look at, and i am thinking about how some of these applications uh, could be turned into other things we do so yeah i'm going to carry on with these free and um freely available uh, lives every week i think it works well. Uh, I like the questions you give me. I answer as many as I possibly can, and um, I'm very happy to do so. And I will also see maybe if we do some group things where um, some people will 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 be very happy to to uh, donate money towards that. Others will maybe not be in a position to be able to do that for many reasons, um, and that will all remain anonymous. So you, no one in the group will will be aware of that so I will not be um you know only I will know and you will know what you're uh, what you are or are not giving and I think that's the fair way of doing it because um I want you all to be equal and um in terms of whether you're getting the same type of uh you know service as someone else it's definitely if I see that there is a genuine need and um for for the same kind of uh, attention and i think that it's it's a worthwhile thing to do uh, and a good use of my time i will that the money's not necessarily um going to uh, impact on that so much um as i say of course there's a kind of a point where i will have a number of <laughs> a number of bills to pay but um at the same time i'm gonna i'm gonna be as fair as i possibly can when it comes to uh, making these decisions um and people have asked me things like, you know, I want to learn German, I want to learn Arabic, I want to learn. If there is a language that I want, I, I'm planning to learn, for example, from January, uh, it, there, there is an option that I may actually just study a language with some of you. If it's a language that I have either studied a little bit of and I'm, want, I'm happy to study it again, um, I am considering one of the languages that's come up a few times uh, to do that. But... Um, I will make a final decision by the 15th uh, when the applications close. So you'll be able to, to do that. Um, so you can still apply, you can still, um, and I'll see if there are groups of you, for example, who have similar goals and we can maybe form smaller groups of us where we get together and we meet. And I think there could be something quite nice about doing something like that as well. Um, so, I mean, things like resources and stuff I've, I've had questions about how i can i think some people have asked of you some of you have asked often answered these questions in a more generic way not relating to this sort of study time with me 
Um, but things like, for example, sharing uh, resources and things like that, I, I continually do that um, on, on my social media channels. So just the other day I shared on Twitter uh, a link and also on Facebook this link for um, some some great language books that you can get free of charge online stories that are in like over 50 languages and that seems quite popular a lot of you like that so if you didn't see it and you're not following me on twitter or you're not on the facebook group um feel free to give it a follow uh, same thing goes here if, you know if you're not on if you're not following me on um on youtube or instagram and so there are different things that i put on the different channels sometimes uh, because the format doesn't always work for every single one. So make sure you follow wherever I am, and then uh, you're more likely to see uh, everything that goes out. Um, but with this, what my plan is that I actually want this to be quite an interactive thing. So there's something a bit special for me about this. It's not... What I had questions with is, um, are you putting together a course and, and you just follow a course, and then you have kind of random messages from me? No. So... The idea is that you will actually have contact hours with me personally, not with some person that works with me because that person doesn't exist. Um, you will work, you, you will have contact hours with me where we will meet and talk about your language study. We will talk about your, your goals. We'll talk about your objectives. We'll talk about what you've been doing. We'll talk about um, the strategies you're using. We'll talk about um, what you're going to do. And then we will also be in touch all through the week to check in with each other now i i what i need is people who are going to be quite serious about this and that you need this um serious approach to language learning so this is why i've made this an application process because i can i can see quite clearly from the applications when people are extremely serious about this um and also i will conduct some interviews over the next few weeks well, two weeks over the next two weeks, I'll conduct some interviews with people I am pre-selecting um, to study with me. Um, of course, I can't choose everyone because um, I, I don't have that much free time to be able to choose everyone. I, I do other I, other projects. I, I work on other things. Um, this isn't um, sort of a, a main job for me, um, but it is something I really enjoy. And I, I'm, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's something that I'm interested in seeing if it could be uh, something that I would do in the future. Um, so there is there is that option potentially. But um, I see this as a, a long term thing. I see this as a thing to, to sort of work to meet goals in the medium and not to long term. I think that it's important to recognize language learning as a, a long term endeavor. Um, it, it could be that, you know, um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sort of holding people to contracts or anything like that. But at the same time, um, I think that it's it's important that the sort of the, there is an, an, more than just sort of a, a trial. I, I, what I what I don't particularly want is um, people to say, OK, well, I want to do one or two sessions because I, I think that that's useless. Um, I mean, you, you, you may as well just watch what I'm doing on YouTube free of charge and and, and um, and just listen to some of the advice. The 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 real advantage of doing a long term project is actually um, with that constant contact with me, um, and and going through um, a process. And language learning processes are, are not don't last a week or two weeks or even a month or even two months. Um, if 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 your goals are are, are shorter than that, then I I, I would probably discourage you from even applying. Um, I, I would also discourage you from applying if your goal is just something that a regular language teacher can do on italki, and I would encourage you to go to italki. Um, there's a Polyglot Conference link where you get $10 off, and there's you can add Richard um, in the, um, when you get to the sort of to pay, and you get an extra $5, so you get $15 for free just by using that link that's in this video uh, description and also uh, with my name. So you may as well just find yourself an italki teacher um, if if that's your goal, is to do something that a teacher can do. Um, where I think, I, I, I think that the best thing really is to use my very specific um, 
expertise in language learning as having studied a number of languages. I can give you insights into linguistic crossover. I can give you insights into etymology. I can give you insights into uh, strategies to remember words and to help words become memorable for you um, because I've had to do that many, many times. Um, I can I can obviously clearly help with motivational issues. I can help with, um, you know, making sense of resources, helping you to make sense of things that you're finding tricky, talk through things with you. I can um, give explanations of certain aspects of language, grammar. Um, I can also talk through um, things about, you know, improve. I can do certain things with improving pronunciation and um, and things, uh, but to a degree, right? There's a, there's a degree to which I can do that. Um, but I can do things like that as well. Um, so there are, there are a number of things I can offer in terms of what I've done myself and how I've studied in the past. And so I would encourage you if, if those kinds of goals are your goals, then and, and you feel that you, you, you would benefit and you have time uh, to add um, time with me into your weekly routine, then I would do that. I would also say if you are planning to just study once a week and that's it and just come to maybe or even twice a week and just have a lesson with an italki teacher and then substitute a second lesson with time with me i would absolutely encourage you to not apply uh, to talk uh, to have this session with me i would um i i think that you would you would need to make make sure that you are absolutely serious in 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 studying at least a little bit every day, um, because if you want to um, meet goals in language learning, unfortunately, if you do two two days a week, um, you may make some progress, but the progress is going to be quite slow, and you're probably going to be very disappointed, and that will be nothing to do with me and everything to do with you. So, um, I, I don't particularly want that either. Um, and I would find that frustrating. Um, so as, as much as I like to encourage people, and I'm very happy to encourage, um, if, for example, you struggle with studying every day, but you have time and you could do it, that's a different matter because we can work on that, right? But if you can't do it every day and you know you can't do it every day and you're honest with yourself and you say you can't do it every day, then don't apply to talk to, to, to do this. Um, it would it would be frustrating for you and it would be frustrating for me um just to give you an example i've been working with somebody uh, this year who had to finish some exams at university and we worked on strategies and i set goals for study and this student worked on them every single day and uh, passed the exams the final exams that were remaining for the degree in um, certain language i'm not going to give the information out because I don't want to sort of <laughs> get people guessing on who this person might be. But um, at the same time, uh, they've finished the exams, but have decided to continue studying with me um, over the past, well, since that happened in, in September, early September. And we've continued twice a week um, uh, studying. And that works very well. We, we, we do use a number of techniques. So we go through that for that language, we're using German. Um, is the main language that, that's uh, being sought after. And uh, we, we go through texts in German and we we look through them and we um, what, what we're now doing is, in the beginning it was more discussing German conversation and things that need to happen for the examinations and motivation and accountability. Uh, and then, and I would do that through the medium of German. Um, whereas now we look through texts in German, and we we translate those texts um, and and analyze the texts um, through the medium of Macedonian, and um, and so we do we do that so that um, the student can make sense of of it and also make memorable um, uh, connections to the language that they're studying and also to their own language and um, and we we that that's kind of how we're working at the moment and that's working pretty well and i'm very satisfied uh with the progress and i'm also satisfied that you know they're happy as well with what we're doing i suppose they must be happy because they've carried on uh with me after the exams and the initial goal was to finish the exams so 
um, when that was completed. Now it's it's uh, it's all working very well. Um, another thing that I'm doing at the moment, I work with um, uh, another person on. We we study Irish together um, uh, three times a week, and we just go through a course together. And um, that works because I wanted to learn Irish. Um, they wanted to learn Irish too, and we decided that we would uh, study Irish together. And so it feels more like kind of a buddy session. Of um, it's not me, you know, teaching obviously because I, I didn't speak Irish, and uh, still don't speak Irish. But what we do is we go through it together, and um, and there's something quite nice about going through it together. And what I can do is I can give insights into some of the things that I see in Irish that. Um, relate to things that I know from Welsh and other Celtic languages that I've studied. So um, it's been it's been interesting to to do that. And then uh, things that I swear I see um, similarities with other Indo-European languages, of course, um, that sometimes comes in too. So yes, this is what I'm doing. Um, uh, the yeah, I'm seeing that motivation is one of the things. I'm just looking through the comments that we got on Instagram um, from here, the things that you 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 answered on the question. Um, so there are a number of things about tips for attention of languages and words, and that's definitely something I can work with you on. Um, and again, these are things that that have different levels of of, um, of issues. One is sort of just remembering words and then using them actively another one is um is actually extending your vocabulary and you, your use of the language so things with confidence as well i'm seeing potentially that can work um i can we can talk through it maybe we'll see if it's part of something else um and then yeah pronunciation which i said yeah we can we can sort of i've got some strategies to look at pronunciation I mean, pretty much all of the strategies I've 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 got a lot of them I've shared already on these free on these free um, lives. Um, I don't believe in keeping these things secret. It's not like um, I'm the first person to think of them. Um, you know, I, I I use and employ strategies that other people have used and employed for many many years, uh, many centuries, in fact, and um, for in in some cases, and so. You know, no one out there is is selling you something brand new. Uh, where <laughs> we're all we're all using some some version of things that have gone before, and maybe combining them in different ways, or using them in slightly different ways, or repackaging them. Right. So, um, I'm, I'm I'm happy to help you repackage things so that it works for you. Is kind of what I can do. Um, okay. So. Let me see. I see that there are questions, and I'm happy to answer questions. But now you have a, an idea of what I'm looking for and what I'm not looking for. So feel free to to fill in the the, the you know the application if you wish to, and if you feel that you fit uh, what I have have laid out here um, in terms of things that I think work and things that I think don't work, and I will reach out. And uh, I'm going to go through them. As I say, I will set up some interviews with some people to just check. Um, some of them uh, are fairly clear to me that they will work, but others I'm uh, sort of, I will definitely need to have conversations to see. And I will look to do that um, over the next week or so um, so that we can we can chat. Um, but some of them I, I will I will just send you an email to say, um, I think that you'd be better off with the teacher. Um, so there we go. So questions from stories by sharing your favorite resources. Okay, yeah, I see the oh, these are the questions that I've just seen now. Um yeah, they're the ones I've just been through the show the, the questions. I uh it's good that they're they're um, adding those together now instead of just showing me the ones that you write on the day. Okay, cool. But let me see the questions now on, on YouTube. Um what do I want to get? What do I want to get out of the sessions? So I want to get out of the sessions a feeling that I've accomplished something to help. Um, I, I've got no interest in um, in doing this for any other reasons except to see improvement and help somebody 
um, so to help you improve um, that's my my main goal really um, uh, you, you know I think it's a basic human need right um, like we like to see things being built and we like to see a result so watching someone go on and on and on and on forever and kind of not really being not really getting anywhere isn't particularly that exciting for me I, I i get that for some people that's a fun 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 thing to do you just keep some thing, things topped up right um and possibly that's um fine that's well no not possibly it is fine um but i don't think that's something that i need to be involved in in terms of a process so if you want to just keep treading water with a number of languages and then go for a teacher, go for conversation groups, because you can do that on your own. You don't need me to to do that, and it, it would make it would make very little sense. So I would I would advise in that circumstance that you you go to a conversation group or to a teacher. If your goal is to improve, then and you're you're struggling with that, or you need you know you need some help in a, in a certain way, then that's how I can I can help you. Um, it's good to see you as well. Thank you. Good evening. Leuk te zien. Ja, bedankt hoor. Ja, leuk te zien hoor. Good evening in Nederland. Ja. Privet. Ja, privet. Kijk je wel. You see. Terrific news. How's your Estonian, Richard? So my Estonian, um, I took a month off Estonian um, because I had the Polyglot conference, and then I had to get back into my kind of normal work and um, other projects that I was doing. And so I, I took a month off Estonian. I'm getting back into it again now. I had, so I had two sessions with uh, my um, my italki teacher since, um, since then, and just sort of getting back to practicing my Estonian. Strange, it's not gone, it's it's still there. There's It's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit rusty because a month after doing three intensive months is, is a, it's a long time to take off, but um, I am actually reducing the number of words that I I want to learn every day because I'm finding that um, putting my putting a stress on myself of 15 words a day is quite is quite a lot at the moment. So I've reduced that right down to five, and um, and and that's helping to kind of to stabilize because I still have a number of things I need to catch up on, and I want to really refresh my Estonian as much as learn new stuff. Um, I think that just learning new stuff on top of a month of being stale is not necessarily the best idea. So I want to carry on, but I don't want to, I don't want to not do anything, but I also don't want to um, go crazy. Um, I already applied and I'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so Chinyu, yeah, I mean, anything that, for example, if you get an, a reply from me and it's um, at the moment, like, I, I, I don't think I, I offer what you need. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there might not be options if I can think of other ways to include things that I think you'd be useful. So I have the information that you sent me and it, and what I plan to do with that information is to see where I can find ways uh, to connect us together, to maybe form groups, to do alternative things, um, because clearly I I have a number of hours free during a working week. I don't have like a hundred hours free during the working week. I, I I have other jobs that I do. I have um, have my family life. I have my own studies. And so I have a number of commitments already. So I have to be kind of careful with how many, how many things I do. And with this, with the sort of the people that I'm going to take on to do sort of one-on-one -on -one study with, um, this is going to be, you know, a commitment of an hour a week. And then also I have to keep in touch. So writing as well, that takes time. It's not just one hour a week, it's more than an hour a week of my time to do that and to keep in touch and to, to keep things going. So, so yeah. Um, okay. Yasu, Kiri Richard. Pusi se simera. Miehara e Christo. Pusi se? O Pedro? Apotinelavi se? 
Um, hello, Richard. Good to see you. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you, Erasmus. Nice to see you. How are you? Um, how do you see the balance between passive consumption of comprehensional input, a reading without looking up words, and more traditional study of looking up words, grammar, explanations, and exercises? I think that um, it depends on you as an individual. The more you do in terms of your passive input, whether it's reading, whether it's listening, whether it's you know chatting away, things that are easy for you just to get more practice. I think that um, I think that it's all good. Um, there can sometimes get you can sometimes get to a point, particularly when you've got to. Um, I guess a B two ish type level, maybe where you can read most things and it's already very understandable, and so you need to keep challenging yourself. So there can be you can with reading certain types of things that you already know very well, um, or listening to things that you already understand very well because it's the same type of vocabulary being used. Um, it can be then a challenge to move yourself out into a different um, topic, and and therefore different types of vocabulary. But I do think that it's generally very a very useful thing to do as much as you possibly can, um, because language is all about being sort of subjected to the language and making sure that you practice and come into contact with it as much as possible. You feel the in limp fantastic. Thank you. I will look forward to seeing your application if I haven't done so already. Um, have you ever learned a language out of pure necessity? Um, yep, I have. Uh, so I had to learn German um, because I was, after I finished university, I hadn't studied German at school or at university. And I applied to do uh, postgraduate studies in European business. And the school that I applied for had, um, had a, a, a campus in Oxford and in Madrid and in Berlin and in Paris. And and then you could do an exchange, I think, in Thailand and a few other places, I'm not sure. Um, but they were the four campuses, right? And when I applied, I went for my interview in Oxford and I interviewed for the for the master's program um, in, in English, uh, French and Spanish. And I was accepted as a first language speaker of all three of those languages. So that what that meant was I could start, I had the choice to start um, studying my program in any of those three places. And but then I needed to have a second language. And because I'd been accepted as a first language user of those three, it kind of didn't make sense to pick one of the other ones, right? So I didn't didn't particularly want to go and do, um, I don't know, French or, you know, or English. I couldn't, obviously, English or French would be a bit ridiculous. But, so I didn't, I decided that I would take German, but to do German, I hadn't studied it. I had to learn German. And then they agreed for me to pass an exam if I could spend the time in Germany and learn it intensively. And so I went to Germany. I studied very intensively for uh, three months. And then I, I arrived in Madrid where I started, I started studying as a, Spanish speaker um, in Madrid and I sat the exam when I arrived in Madrid for German and if I didn't pass German I would have I don't know what I would have done to be honest I didn't even consider it very seriously what else I would have done but I I was I felt quite confident after I arrived back from Germany and um, anyway I went into the exam and for sure the oral was was not too bad for me at all um, even the written and the reading and the listening, um, I, I passed. I didn't do as well as the oral, but I mean, it was it, it was supposed to be a kind of a level where they expect you to be after you finished a degree in the language at university. So I don't know, maybe a B2, C1-ish level. And so I, I did pass it and I was accepted to study German as my as my foreign language um, in, in, in Madrid. So that's, that's what I did. And um, but that was out of necessity. I had to do it to be able to study in, in Spain. Um, otherwise, yeah, it would have been a bit weird because I couldn't have really done English and it would have been very odd doing French because I'd been living in France like just before that. And so yeah, it would have been a bit weird. Um, 
so so yeah and how do you do it if you don't like the language if you don't like the language i think it's going to be very tough but um that's difficult if you don't like the language i think you need to learn to like the language as well unfortunately i think that yeah um, not liking a language and then learning it and studying it and just doing it all the time i think is pretty challenging do you feel it's easier to remember to remember words and phrases when you use them in conversation with someone absolutely Joe. so um when i start using i i, I actually make an effort to use in a very deliberate way, uh, words, phrases, expressions that I've learned. Um, so I do that uh, very often. Um, it's kind of like, you know, trying to remember certain things and then trying to sort of to use them. What I find really funny is um, in language, and this isn't just like, this is pretty much any language that I've come across. Um, sometimes you get to a stage where you have words or expressions that different speakers will understand different slightly differently and it's because um, of their own idiolect the way uh, they've learned them themselves and maybe they've not learned them in a formal way but they've learned them from someone else their yeah their their the sort of their understanding of what the word means might be skewed um sometimes it might be a word that they don't know um and yeah it, it's quite weird so when when that happens but i i do try i remember once when i was in france and i was living in france and um in the in the in the, there's a um, a novel called germinal by emile zola um and uh, zola writes and germinal is like this really thick book right and it's um it's got lots of going down lines and different things and one of the words that they used is gazui, which is like a chirping of birds. And um, this isn't a normal word that you that you learn, I guess. Um, and it was I, I hadn't seen that word in my normal French um, at that to that point. And and so when I I made an effort to use it, and I used it with one of my friends in France, and um, he didn't know it. And I had to explain to him what that word was. He was like, I've never heard the word in my life. Uh, because I heard birds chirping, so I actually heard this, this, this word. So, I, and it was the only word that really adequately described what I was listening to. It wasn't just birds singing, it was chirping. So, it, you know, it, it's, it's weird when you pick up these words and then you use them. And you also get to understand which words people understand and don't. So, for example, in... In Macedonian, there are two words for poppy, the poppy flower that you have. One one word is mac, which is um, the poppy with uh, sort of four, lead, four, four petals that comes off, you know, the, sort of the, the red poppies. And it's like what we wear for um, Remembrance Day in the UK. We wear this, the poppy. And so anyway, that's called mac. And then there's another word, which is bulka. And bulka is the, the poppy with many petals, okay, inside. Now... Macedonian speakers know bulka normally. They know what that is. They've, they've got an idea. Uh, mac, not so much. So I didn't know that they didn't know that word. And the word is very popular in other Slavic languages because um, mac is is like M-A-K. So it's like uh, mac is used in, in, I think it's used in Russian. It's used in Czech for sure. Like makovi is like, they, they have makovi everywhere, makovi everything. Um, uh, I don't know, whatever, these like poppy seeds that they have on them. So they have these poppy seeds a lot. Uh, but it's weird because I thought the word was well known and apparently not as the flower, you know, as the flower. Um, so anyway, I was describing to some Macedonian speakers um, about these wild poppies that had come into the garden and they were mac, they weren't bulka. So I, I used the word mac and and they looked and they were like, what what are you talking about? I, I have no idea. And um and I'm like, look, this this flower that's called Mac. And they went, Oh, we call it <laughs> Divolale, which means um wild tulip. Um <laughs> and obviously it's not a wild tulip, that's not what it is. It's a poppy. Um so I, I yeah, I found I found it really I find things like that really funny because you'll learn words and then you potentially don't don't use them or you find out that what people do and don't know in their own language. 
Um, you can look up words in a dictionary as well. This is why sometimes when you look words up in a dictionary and you, you want to know them, sometimes they're not, um, they're not commonly understood. So um, in the Balkans, for example, the, the idea of um, being assertive doesn't exist in the sort of n normal mindset of people. So people tend to be, and, and you, you, you sort of see it play out in society. So in, in the UK, we're taught how to be assertive, not to be aggressive and not to be passive, but to be assertive. And this is something I think it's very Anglo-Saxon, uh, but it possibly is in other countries as well. And in the Balkans, you tend to see kind of either a very passive reaction or a very aggressive reaction. And you see it play out just the way people act, where people don't tend to be very assertive. And if you're assertive, they, they often will see it as one of the other two. Usually they, they see assertiveness as aggression, um, which is really interesting for me. Um, but yeah, so but the word exists in the language, but... Um, if you use it, people are like they, they don't really understand the concept and it's kind of lost on them. So it's really weird when you get these kinds of words and languages that, that exist but don't exist, if that makes sense. Uh, it's funny, it's funny when people sort of talk about words and word use and stuff. And yeah. I'm curious if you've ever learned Hebrew. I've, I've studied some Hebrew. Um, I had Hebrew speaking friends um, here for a while and so I learned a bit of Hebrew from them and also because they used it with their children. So I used to hear it quite a lot. Um, and um, and so I have, I've studied, I've studied it. Um, uh, yeah, so, and what, how do you say? Um, yeah, so, Anim Ledaber, Loyotertov, Arshav, Aval, Anelamati, Evrit, Katsat, the Macedonia, the Bite. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me see. Richard, how would you make a series of multilingual upbringing for your daughter? Jack, it's a good question. Um, I, I, it's very difficult to know, sort of, I, with, with, with making a series about raising multilingual children. I actually find that it's better to work with a family. So this is another thing that I've I've done, but I haven't done as a job uh, in in terms of I haven't looked for clients uh, to do this. But I have worked with uh, families to advise them on what to do with their children, uh, following my own experiences and also what I've read about it. Um, I, I'm not um, somebody who researches this, but what I can do is give some some concrete solutions and um, explain my understanding and knowledge and see what works for the family. But I, I think it's a very individual family basis thing that that needs to work on. Um, it's not something I, I you can kind of get information from one thing, but it really is quite quite family specific, and um, it depends on the languages, the language or languages, the, the father and the mother speak or any other extended family or the community or where you're based it depends on many many factors but i'm um i'm very happy to sort of talk more about those kinds of things um i always think maybe i should i should have added that as a sign of a thing that i do uh with with this sort of language um you know helping people learn learn languages because i i do enjoy helping people to to come up with solutions for this kind of stuff um there is a family that gets in touch with me from time to time when they when they're moving or when they're going, they're, they're a kind of an international family and they they were based here and they they contacted me while they talked they, they talked to me for many times while they were here about their children and their upbringing multilingually and then when they moved to another country they talked to me and then when they were about to move again they talked to me again and when their kids were going from different years in school what the options were what would be best what maybe they should do and um i mean I always say that it needs to be something that works for the family. So what I can do is I can I can be a sounding board for what sounds right and for you and um, and help you find the path that works for you. Uh, so, um, but there's definitely not a co a cookie cutter way of doing this. It's it's an individual thing, and and so it is a bit tricky. Um, sort of giving people just random advice because um 
I think this is the thing, you know, when when we sort of when we sell, I don't know, a, a course or whatever, it's it's all well and good, and and there's some definitely valuable material in these things. Uh, at the same time, it's it's super individual. Language learning, uh, teaching kids, it's all super individual. So yeah, I mean, if if I, I, I mean, we could possibly talk about that more in more detail. What's the deal with the way to study vocab? Oh yeah, <laughs> so vocab is an interesting thing. Um, vocabulary is one of the things that you just always stays with you and you always have to sort of carry on working on. Um, there's no real easy way to just learn all the vocab. Um, there are lots of techniques that can work for studying vocab. So depending on the language, depending on your lang linguistic background, Around. Um, we could find cognates, we could find things that, that sound similar or, or different, or um, we can also um, explore sort of how the language uses certain prefixes or prefixes or suffixes, whatever. Um, so there are many things that we can use to help to facilitate the process. Um, and also looking at which words you actually need and when. So for me, the prioritization of, of language um, vocab learning particularly is quite key so so yeah there are lots of things um how did you get your spanish pronunciation so native like i mean it's very kind of you to say that um i don't often think of my pronunciation so much or my accent so much um i lived with spanish-speaking people um i lived in in spain and in Czech Republic and in Spain and in France, um, alongside many many Spanish speaking people, and um, and so I've had a number of years where I've I've used Spanish as one of my main daily languages um, throughout my life, and it's yeah I guess I guess you know when you're with that all, all the time every day and you you know it, it kind of rubs off, but there are certain things that I do to try it. You know, I, I make an effort. I see the accent and the pronunciation as part of the language and not as something separate. So for me, um, it's like if you're trying to sing a song, right? Um, I could I could learn the words to a song like, I don't know. Um, let me think of a, of a song. I don't know. Um, um, you know. Poker face. And I could sing. I could say. Uh, can't read my, can't read my, can't read my poker face. And I could say it like that. I'm saying the same words as Lady Gaga, but it and and it's understandable that I'm talking and and I'm sing I'm, I'm trying to talk about the song Poker Face. I could then go a different way and sort of make my own version of it and sing it in a in a very different way. But then if I want to actually be more Lady Gaga-esque and, and sound more like that and how it's it's sung in a more authentic way in the original style, then can be my, can read my, read my poker face, p -p -p poker face. <laughs> You've got to kind of get into it a little bit and it feels a bit embarrassing in the beginning, but it's it's super important to, to do that kind of thing um, so that you take in not just the words, the grammar, but also the intonation, the accent, the pronunciation, and it feels like a cohesive thing. And a lot that's to do with uh, people's struggle with pronunciation, particularly, and, and uh, accent is to do with feeling silly um, by putting on a voice or imitating somebody speaking. And that's the kind of thing that I find people struggle with. Um, you can take it the other direction, and sometimes it can be a you go the other way and you make it really, you know, over the top, like almost a caricature of of what it is. So, for example, um, you know, if you were to take Russian, and, and instead of like just speaking, I might have a bit of an accent in Russian, um, but I, for example, I would say "Привет, меня зовут Richard." That's kind of my normal way of speaking Russian, right? Привет, меня зовут Ричард. Очень приятно. But I could go crazy Russian, like caricature Russian, and go, Привет, меня зовут Ричард. And 
<laughs> again, that's not authentic. So you kind of need to bring it back because one would be co almost comical and um, would be seen as kind of like, a, yeah, it, it just a bit, a bit too far. And, but then also, I don't want to say, um, Privyat Minyazovich Richard, because that's basically English with Russian words. Um, I'm almost pronouncing it so that it's understandable, but it sounds super, um, super English with just Russian words. So there's kind of an in-between, right? So sometimes what you can do is with a language, you can hear how people with from that country would typically speak your language. So for example, if I were to speak English with a Russian accent, I could speak like this. And all I need to do is to start using the Russian words over the accent. И поэтому это будет ну, говорить по-русски. И это похоже чуть-чуть. And that's kind of what I do, is you, you kind of go from one extreme and you rein it back. But you kind of don't make it go... Because obviously, like, an authentic Russian accent doesn't sound like, because it sounds like you're constipated. And, and we're, we're not speaking Russian. Russians don't sound constipated. Russian is actually a very beautiful language. And... Um, when I hear Russian people speaking uh, their language, it sounds sounds actually very very nice. Um, so it's it's sort of making an effort, but sort of meeting it halfway. And if you have a slight accent, it's not the end of the world. It's it's absolutely natural, right? You're not going to sound with all exactly the right sounds everywhere, perfect all, the whole time. So they're kind of some of the little things I do. Um, finally found a good textbook for Polish, um, Irene, fantastic. I've been struggling all my life to learn Polish and now I've, it's okay. A senior citizen, oh, fantastic. Wondering if, you, if I will ever learn it. Yeah, well, I'm sure you will. I'm glad you found a textbook, that's amazing. It's cool when you've got something that works for you. Um, seems fuzzy or foggy, not, not clear and defined in my head, like my native language, okay. It's asking makes sense, but any words and advice would be very appreciated. Sorry for the long message. I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, sorry, I didn't see the first bit. I wish you were learning even. Even after learning uh, for a long time, there are concepts that hold onto my native language so heavily, even if I don't translate it in my head, that concept. Yeah, I mean, that's completely normal as well. Um, there are certain words that are so deeply ingrained and entrenched and, and, and sort of in from a language, whether it's your first language, second language, or whichever language it is. And it's very difficult to, to disassociate those those meanings, right? So for me, I, I, I don't know if I've given you this example before, but for example, the word devil. Uh, devil for me was always was finger. But in Macedonian, it means it means grandfather. And for me, that word now, as soon as I hear the word dedo, my very first um, thought goes towards grandfather instead of finger. And I never imagined that would happen, but it does. And when I speak Spanish, sometimes I use the word dedo and I'm like, have I just used the Macedonian word for grandfather in the wrong place? And I kind of, <laughs> it triggered something in my head. And it, and I feel like it's like, I'm going, I'm going crazy. But um, I, I get that feeling and I kind of just, I've learned to live with it. Um, but it, I get it. And there will also be things that have shades in, in your language. For example, if you've got um, a word that's really, you know, associated with a certain aspect of culture or it brings up imagery in your head for a certain thing in your language, then, yeah, it's, I mean, getting rid of that is is possibly almost an impossible thing to do, but it's learning to live with it and, and sort of, yeah fight that dissonance in your dissonance in your head of, of where you are um okay it's rather normal word in french not like the not like the uh what's that the tri the trill the mesange okay yeah the mesange bleu um okay yeah i thought guys was a normal word but um apparently not everyone knows that i don't know the school that publishes Ah, Kropu Kropu books have a course for seniors and it's based in Krakow. Wow, okay. Um, Cześć, Mark. Yeah, you know Mark. In Czech Republic, it's like everywhere, that word. Um, 
hurrah is for upper beginners yes i I'm recognizing these polish resources i remember seeing them all in uh, in in poland um okay every multifungal farm is different yeah thank you for agreeing i'm glad you agreed uh, pure beginner as based on that I said polish okay um do you need to have a positive relationship with the language that you want to study? I think it helps. If you if you don't have a positive relationship with it, then motivation is quite quite challenging. Um, so you could potentially not have a particularly. You could have a neutral, or I don't know. Negative is probably a good way to start, but you could have a neutral um, starting point and sort of understand what you enjoy and then find find your joy find what you like right so you could potentially do that but um but yeah i think you need to do it really in the long long run for it to uh, be a, a well possibly a successful but definitely a pleasurable um process i have met people who have studied languages just because they have to and they have no particular desire they tend not to end up speaking them particularly well or um really care about anything much about it once they've learned it they learned it to pass an exam to get a job to to do something and they kind of just use it for what they use it for but the it's i think it's a very different reason right it's a very different reason for why many of us are learning languages we tend to learn languages because we've got this passion to learn the language right it's a bit different so there could be people out there that, that listen to me i mean i think you know i you, you just want to learn whatever um for, for something very concrete but yeah generally it's uh it's not the normal thing that i see yeah yeah thing to yeah i get lady gaga i don't know why that came into my first thing as a thing to sing i could have i could have i could have sung many many other things Fala em português. Agora não posso porque eu tenho que, que fazer uma outra coisa. Então tenho que voltar para uh, fazer outra coisa. Eu tenho outro projeto agora. Mas a próxima vez pode ser também. E você pode ser na, na, no Instagram. Eu tenho feito várias vezes uh, coisas em, em português. Uma área, duas horas em português. Então para ajudar a gente, para falar melhor outras línguas, para estudar, para fazer qualquer coisa. Então é isso, sim. Tá bom, legal. I find that the old Russian learning exaggerate certain words. Urok, yeah, I like that. Is actually urok. Is a bit uh, softer, exactly, yeah. There is a definite way of doing that, yeah. Um, it's normal. Um, que eu vi progressos em La Coreia. Ginesta uh, tre bona. Mi bedauras que gi estas tre mal facila língua, que é anca o... Mi havis o caso em Uzijin, em Interreto, que mi mi havas anca o grupo em in, Interreto, que mi, 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 mi lernas, que mi lernas, que mi lernas, Kai mi mi provas uzi jin en la en la grupoi kai con alia homoi en interreto kai ankau mi havas ankau alia aferoi aferoin chitia libro in katil plu said mi pensas ke mi mi devus uzi jin kai lerni jin multipli tempo. Char ginestas lingvo que mi mi pos lerni en unyaroi en unyaro o duyaroi ginestas pli longa longa tempo projecto 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 dancon Spanish word under the Spanish the word under with word other with the verbs and let's say etc. How do you get your mind to understand the sentence structures and flexible sentences saying the same thing? Um so what you mean like me llamo así con con se así como como se dice 
¿Cómo se dice? Like, how do you say? Or how is it said? Um, whatever. ¿Cómo se dice? No sé qué en español. O ¿cómo dice él? Lo que sea, lo que sea. No sé. O ¿cómo dice, por ejemplo, mi, mi profesora de español? How does my, my, my teacher say in Spanish? You mean that? I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean. But yeah, they mean different things. So, I mean, we have them in a lot of these reflexive forms we have in in a number of languages, and in, in the Slavic languages, they get a little bit crazy. But in Spanish and in French and in English, they're kind of comparable, I find. In German, and Germanic and Romance languages are kind of comparable, um, I find. But I, I, yeah, I get used to them because um, they just mean something different, I suppose. And um, it takes practice. In the beginning, it's practice, obviously, uh, to, to get used to them. Okay. Can you recommend any better alternative to SRS? What's SRS? Can be overwhelming. I don't know what SRS is, sorry. Um, is it, are you talking about the radio station in, in Australia? I'm not sure what you mean. Do you confuse Spanish and Portuguese when you are speaking? Sometimes a word might creep in, um, it might turn into Portuñol, but generally speaking, not really, because I, I studied both of them at university. Um, definitely Portuguese in Spanish doesn't happen. Um, some Spanish might creep into Portuguese because Portuguese is weaker than Spanish for me. Um, but, but I mean, again, You know, it's part of my university degree was, uh, I did my degree in French, Spanish, Italian and Portuguese. So, um, oh, space repetition system. Yeah, um, I don't use them very often, really. I, I really don't, sorry. I like, I like Anki and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, th I mean, I think that, you know, Yeah, I mean, Memorize and Anki are the ones that people tend to use most. I'm not big into them, and I'll tell you why. It's because for me personally, um, I found that I was getting good at, when I used them, I was getting good at answering the questions, almost like remembering the answers. But then I wasn't using the words and recognizing the words necessarily in, in situ when I saw them. So, yeah. Anyway, unfortunately, I must go. I have to um, go and do some other stuff. Now I've got other projects that I have to attend to before um, I retire for the evening. But it was really, really nice to see you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you do want to apply to study with me um, from January, then feel free to look in the description on uh, the YouTube channel or um, go to my blog, speakingfluently.com. And the latest blog post is all about this. And I will um, I will go through the applications and and start replying soon. Um, so I look forward to it. You've got until the 15th of December to do that. And if I see some cool things that we can do, I may innovate as well and uh, do some additional things. But otherwise, I'll be continuing with this, um, as I say, This isn't me trying to sell you anything. It's literally if this is a helpful thing and you feel that you want to do it. I mean, entirely up to you um, what you would like to do and and what you feel um, it's it's worth in terms of your studies. So um, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care. If you haven't, subscribe, give a like, whatever it is you do to sort of, yeah, <laughs> on the social stuff. Enjoy, and I will speak to you all next week. Take care and happy language learning. Bye-bye.